Hello students, so welcome back. So like I uh, told you during the last, uh, at the end of, towards the end of last video, I'll be explaining now, I'll be proving rather, that Kelvin Planck statement and Clausius statement are saying the same thing, right? But, okay, so what, let's, let's quickly look at this. Uh, I made two sketches, one, this engine, both the engine and heat pump, uh, you know, are running uh, between uh, two reservoirs. Uh, reservoir T1 and T2, right? T1 is source, T2 is temperature of the sink. T1 is the temperature of source. Now, before I proceed, I want to highlight one thing. Remember, reservoir is a concept where this body, reservoir, either gives the heat or it takes the heat. Okay? So that's the function. Uh, if it is sink, then it is receiving the heat. If it is source, then it is giving the heat. So there has to be net heat flow out from the source. Net heat should be flowing in, in the reservoir. If there is no heat, no heat, no net heat transfer, then reservoir loses its meaning, right? Uh, it just, it becomes irrelevant. Because reservoir is a conceptual thing to explain at an abstract level all the heat engines, right? And uh, uh, so reservoir either it has to give the heat, net heat should be flowing out of the reservoir or net heat should be flowing into the reservoir. If that doesn't happen then the reservoir loses its meaning, its relevance. Remember this. Okay. Now what is Clausius saying? Now what Clausius says is, look at this diagram. Hmm? Q2 cannot, sorry, I'm, saying, I'm so sorry. What Kelvin Planck says, Kelvin Planck says is Q2 cannot be equal to 0, right? I will explain you. Uh, you can go back to video if there is any conceptual uh, clarity is required, always go back to previous videos. So Q2 cannot be equal to 0, right? So some heat has to be rejected. You cannot convert all the heat into work for an engine working in cycle. That's what is Kelvin Planck statement. What Clausius statement is saying? If heat is to be lifted from low temperature to high temperature, this cannot happen unless there is some work which is taken, right? So what Clausius is saying, W cannot be 0. If W is 0, what happens? Heat is flowing spontaneously from low temperature to high temperature. Q2 will be equal to Q1. Heat is flowing without any. That's not possible. That is what Clausius said. Now we are going to say that, uh, we are going to show that these statements are basically same, right? So what is the way to do that? So one way to do this is just violate first statement hmm? and you should logically show that the second statement also gets violated, right? Or and rather, violate second statement and then logically you should show that the it means violation of first statement. So if you can do that, then you have proved that these two statements are of the same thing, right? And that's what we are going to do. For example, let's look at this. I am now saying that I am going to violate Kelvin Planck statement. What do you mean by violating Kelvin Planck statement? Violating Kelvin Planck statement means saying that Q2 is 0. Right? Saying Q2 is 0. So let's violate that. That means Q2 is 0. Right? There is no Q2. If there is no Q2, then there is no heat transfer. So this is gone. Right? This is violation. That means this Kelvin, this engine is converting all the heat supplied to it into work. There is no heat rejection. This is not possible, but we deliberately violate. It's a thought, a thought thing. So we are going to violate this. So here you can see we are not going to violate Clausius statement, but we will show how it automatically gets violated. This heat pump, hmm, this heat pump is uh, is taking heat from low temperature and giving it to high temperature and for that there is W which is not zero there is some W but now here we have an engine which, in, which is converting all the heat into work this is W here is a heat pump which lifts heat from low temperature gives it to high temperature and it requires W okay so this is how it is the system is right now but now if you want if, if this heat pump has to lift heat from low temperature to high and give it to high temperature uh, following Clausius statement it requires work but that work can be obtained from here right so I can what I am doing is uh, I am not violating Clausius please note what I'm, I have violated is Kelvin Planck 
But now what I am doing is, you require W, fine. So this W is coming from here. W coming from here, right? So W is coming from here, heat is lifted and is given. Now just look what is happening. You have sink, you have source. And between sink, sink is a body of low temperature. Source is a body of high temperature. And look at what is the system now. What has happened? Heat is being taken from low temperature and is being given to high temperature, obviously, without any external work input. Where is the external work input? Between these two, are you taking heat work from anywhere here? No. There is no work that is being taken from surrounding. If this is, this is if you consider this body and this body as part of system, uh, right? There is no external work required. You are able to, this device is able to lift the heat from low temperature and give it to high temperature, right? Without any external source of work. That is violation of Clausius statement. What we violated was Kelvin Planck statement. What we proved that logically if you violate Claus Kelvin Planck statement, Clausius statement also gets violated. Just think about it. Heat in this system now, there is no extra external work. Heat is being lifted from here and it is giving, given over here, right? Just think about it. So this is Q2 being lifted, W is added here. So this Q1 is Q2 plus W, right? Q2 plus W. W is coming from here, Q2 is coming from here. And then, so ultimately, every time, so heat is being lifted from low temperature and given to high temperature, right? This is see, Q2 is going back here and without any external work. That is violation of Clausius statement. Okay. Now let let's uh, let me violate Clausius statement, and then automatically we will show that it violates Kelvin Planck statement. That we will do in the next video.